Today, we're gonna turn this white piece of paper into an origami butterfly. And then we're gonna decorate that origami butterfly with a colorful, realistic design. To make this origami butterfly, you're going to need a square piece of paper. I like to use white paper, but you could also use origami paper. It comes in a lot of different colors. Sometimes there are even cool designs on it. If you're using white paper, you're gonna also need some colors so that you can decorate the white butterfly at the end. To start this butterfly, we're gonna fold this paper diagonally first and crease the fold. Creasing these first few folds is gonna make that difficult fold that's coming up a lot easier. So make sure you crease it, maybe give it a couple of extra passes just in case. Then we open it back up and we're gonna crease it diagonally in the other direction as well. Remembering to crease the fold and we're gonna open it back up again. And you can see that there is an X in the center of the paper. Now we're gonna flip this paper over and we're going to fold it in half we're gonna fold the bottom up to the top. And again, crease that fold really well. And when you open it back up, now we have a line right through the middle of the X. Now this is the tricky part. So first I'm gonna pop the point in the center up. So you can see it sort of looks a little bit like a pyramid. But you can also see that these two sides are starting to go into the center. So those first few folds prepare the paper for this. We're gonna push the sides in and you can see that there's a triangle right here and a triangle right here. So keep pushing those sides in and when you can reach them, take both triangles and just pinch them together. Once you have this one triangle, go ahead and rub those folds down and try to get the triangle to lay flat on the table. If you need to rewind the video and watch that again, please do so. It's a kind of a tricky fold, but once you learn how to do it, it comes up a lot in origami and it's really helpful to know how to do it. Now I'm gonna turn the paper around 180 degrees. So the long side of the triangle is on top. Each side of this triangle has two flaps, one here and one here. And on this side, there's one and there's the other one. We're gonna fold the top flaps down to the bottom point of the triangle. Leave that flap there. We're only gonna fold the top ones down to the bottom point and crease that fold. Next, we flip the whole thing over so it's nice and flat again. All right, so this is the basic shape of the butterfly. These are the two butterflies' wings but we wanna separate the top and the bottom wing a little bit. So we're gonna fold this bottom point, the entire thing, the little flaps and the big flap. We're gonna fold the entire thing up and past the top of the triangle. Just a little bit past, like this. So these two pieces right here are the tops of the butterfly's wings. We don't wanna fold this too far because that looks way too small for a butterfly's wing. So we're only gonna pass a little bit. Now we're gonna take those two flaps right here and we're gonna fold them each down. As you do that, this corner is gonna pop up a little bit. That's a good thing. 
So we're gonna, we're gonna continue, slide that point all the way down, and then flatten the part that popped up, just like that. The reason that's good is because it creates this space right here to separate the top of the butterfly wing from the bottom of the butterfly wing. We're gonna repeat that on the other side. So I'm gonna take this flap, I'm gonna bring it all the way down. When I bring it down, this part right here pops up. So I'm going to put the, the wing all the way flat and then press down the bit that popped up. And again, there's that space between the two wings. All right, butterflies do not have beaks like this. So we're gonna go ahead and fold this down, get it out of the way, just like that. All right, we only have a little bit left. We're gonna flip the entire thing over and then we're gonna fold the butterfly in half. Try to keep it even so both wings are folded basically on top of each other. Doesn't have to be perfect, just get it as close as you can. The closer it is, the more realistic it'll be. There we go. Now I'm gonna turn everything 90 degrees like this. Where that little beak was that we folded over because butterflies don't have beaks, we're gonna put our fingers right on, the, on that edge. That's where the body of the butterfly is. So I'm gonna hold the body to make sure that I leave enough space for the body to be there at the end. And I'm gonna fold the wing over but I'm not gonna move my fingers. They're holding that space. When I fold the wing down, I don't wanna fold it straight down. I wanna fold it diagonally over to here, like this. That does a couple things. One, it creates a space between these two wings. That looks a lot nicer than having them right against each other. It also creates an angle right here which looks more like a real butterfly's wings. We don't want it to be flat across the top. This looks a lot better with this angle. So I crease right there. I'm gonna flip the entire butterfly over. I'm gonna hold the body again with my fingers and I'm going to fold the, the other wing on top of the first wing so that they are lined up again. crease right there. It's starting to get really thick. Good thing we're at the end. There you go. And then we open our butterfly. I'm going to flip it over. I loosen up that middle body part a little bit. We don't want it to be flat because see that doesn't look so good. But we don't want it to be completely closed either. It's, it's nice to see the body in between the wings. And there is our origami butterfly. The next step is to get some colors out and add the design to the wings. Because I'm trying to make a realistic butterfly, I have to draw the designs myself. I couldn't just start with a random pattern on a piece of origami paper. I have to wait till it's folded so that I can draw the design in the right places. Also, because I want it to be realistic, I'm gonna be using a reference picture. I'm looking at an actual picture of a monarch butterfly because that's the kind of butterfly I'm designing. I wanna make sure all of the black lines are in the right places and I wanna make sure that the pattern matches a real monarch butterfly. There are lots of butterflies you could find. So you could find a picture of a butterfly you like. You could also make up your own butterfly. There's so many possibilities with different patterns and color combinations that you could probably design a really nice butterfly right out of your imagination.
So here's the finished monarch butterfly. I'm glad I used a reference picture to make sure that the lines were in the right places. After I finished the design, I went back and added some yellow highlights. But what really worked, I think, is the yellow around the white spots. It kind of gives them a little bit more depth. They're not just flat white spots anymore, and they're not just flat yellow spots. As realistic as it looks, it's still origami, so it's not exactly the same as the real thing but I think it works great. And I think that most people would be able to recognize that this is a monarch butterfly if you knew what a monarch butterfly was. So I hope you're happy with the way that your butterfly turned out. I hope you like the design that you ended up choosing and I will see you next time. Adios.